All right, Ken, thank you very much. And once again, welcome everybody to the SNY Sam McKee Memorial Broadcast Studio on the first floor at Meadowlands Racing and Entertainment. We are glad you joined us for a Friday night of live harness action. I am your host, Dave Brower, who will do this interview tonight. And it is my pleasure to welcome in one of the sharpest, most talented young handicappers that I know. You heard Ken say it. He called you an ace. He called you the natural. We'll get to that in just a little bit. But his name is Rich Mate. Rich, thanks so much for being part of our uh, In the Sulky guest appearance tonight you wear a lot of different hats in the world of horse racing you're not just a handicapper so tell us about it no I also work at Harris Philadelphia and Freehold Raceway I'm the charter at Freehold so you know I had to get on up here and try and get here for 605 and then also at Harris Philadelphia I'm the photo finish and teletimer and then I also announce at different places yeah what are me. the tracks that you've announced at? Uh, Harris Philadelphia okay. Vernon Downs Ocean Downs Rosecroft and I even did a little bit of the Gateway, the baby races at Gateway. So. Oh, I think I remember that because I was there for some of those this year. Well, anyway, you were very uh, easy to listen to and you're a multi-talented <laughs> you. person. And one of the young guys in the business. The problem that we all hear is, you know, some of us are all getting a little bit older. How do we attract young fans to the business? You're a perfect example of that. Tell us how you got bitten by the racing bug early oh, on. Going to the racetrack when I was younger, my parents used to take me all the time. And my aunt had horses when we were younger, so we'd go down to Monmouth Park with my grandparents and the whole family would go. And I've just been addicted to it ever since, and it's always what I wanted to do. All right. Looking over your resume and getting to know you over the past couple of weeks here, you know, a couple of things stick out. You were a groom and a hot walker back in 2010. Tell yeah. us a little about that experience. Um, it was at Monmouth Park. My aunt actually got me the job. It was for a low-profile barn share in Houston. And we had only about three horses, but it was the best summer I ever had. Getting up at 5 in the morning, I was excited to go do it. And sometimes it was hot during the day, but I just enjoyed it. All right, you're a graduate of Middlesex County College. Are you glad that the school stuff is over and you're moving on to uh, real big-time careers? Yeah, well, I'm not done yet. I'm still going to go to Rutgers and try and get my uh, bachelor's degree there. So. All right, I, I read that you learned how to announce. You probably learned a little bit, but you, you, you visited that Tom Durkin school up at Goshen. What, what was that experience like? Oh, he was the man, and everything he said I paid attention to because he's the best of the best. And when he actually told me I did a good job when I got to call a race, I wow. was just... It's and it's just jaw dropping hearing yeah. a compliment from him. Yeah, take it from somebody who got the chance to work with him early on in my career in racing. He was always a fun guy, and I love it when I get to see him. You know, uh, when he was up at Saratoga calling, I'd always give him a big wave, and he'd uh, he'd wave back. Moving on, aside from all the other things that you do in racing, besides the photo finish, the timer, the chart calling, and everything else, you do some podcasts with our good buddies Mike Bozich and Mike Carter. That's Post Time with Mike and Mike. Tell us about that. In post Time with Mike and Mike. It's on every Thursday. And it's a radio show. And usually for the big days, they'll have me come on. Or we'll even, the Meadowlands actually hired us for Hamiltonian Meadowlands Pace. So we did live broadcast from here. And let me tell you, the Meadowlands takes care of you when you're doing something for them. So that was a great experience. And even me and Mike Bozich, every day at Harris Philadelphia, would do a Facebook Live and talk about the races. And that actually was, we got, we received really good compliments we they wanted it every day so we just kept giving it to them well, it was a great great time i'm glad to hear it and i'll be honest with you i watched a few of those and that's why you're sitting in that chair right now i thought you did a great job and you would be a fine addition uh, if we get to use you a little bit uh, more throughout the winter and maybe into the uh, summer here the other thing though that you do that you're most known for is handicapping and you're not just a harness guy you're a thoroughbred guy as well so tell us you know maybe which game you think is easier which game you make more money with and how you work out at anonymousracing.com um i used to go to the racetrack for thoroughbred so that's what i know more than harness racing so that's what's easier for me but yeah for anonymous racing he'll, um john piazic he's the editor he'll shoot me an email whenever he needs me i'll do golf stream aqueduct we usually do the big tracks and on the big day usually as everybody do it so that's where my handicapping has come into play, where everybody can see what I write and analyze each race. All right, so it's anonymousracing.com. Do they have a Facebook page and Twitter as well? H how, do we, how do we get to your picks? Let's put it that way. Um, usually I'll post them up on Twitter myself, but you can just go on anonymous racing. John does a great job of getting it out there. 
and usually you can just find it on anonymousracing.com or even on my Twitter. All right, before we put you to work as a handicapper on tonight's card, and I'm ready for that, I got to know, you heard Ken work it and tease it in the open here. You've oh already boy. gained the nickname, The Natural, at such a young age here. Tell us how that came to be and who gave it to you. Well, I was filling it at Ocean Downs one night, and it was probably the second night I've ever filled in somewhere, and Mike Bozich was coming down to do the next day. So I asked Pete Zemanski, who's the director of racing, if I could stay and watch him. So he came up, and he's like, you want to call a couple races? So I said, okay. So I called a race, and Mike was actually in the judges' room, and after the race, he storms out, and he's like, oh, my God, you are a natural. <laughs> and he high-fived me, and I will never forget it. All right. And we, we all know Pete uh, from our uh, years here at the Meadowlands, too. Pete, one of the great guys uh, in all of harness racing. So that's it. That's how you got and the that, name The Natural. At Moses. least somebody else gave it to yes. you. Well, you know, I, I'm a firm believer that you have to have it given to you. Yes. You certainly can't pick your own nickname, but, you know, that, that's just the way I feel about that. All right. Now that we know who you are, what you do, and what you, uh, your past is, we're going to put you to work as a handicapper tonight. Night, and we're going to kind of include you in our best bets and long shot price plays around the horn here. But you're going to get your own stage here. You've got a best bet for us tonight. It's coming up in race seven. And you just told me before we went on, you really like this horse tonight. Yeah, I like Iron Mind Johnny tonight. He's the seven in race seven. Last week there was a bit of confusion because the pace slowed down. And he actually hit Brett Miller's helmet. And as soon as he hit Brett Miller's helmet, he went off stride. So I'm going to throw that race right out. I've watched this horse at Harris, Philadelphia, and he's gotten really good over the summer. He had trips that you just thought he'd back up, and he would grind, and he'd win the race. So I like Iron Mind Johnny today in race number seven. Do you think that's one of the things that fans really have to do, watch these races very closely in case you miss something, maybe you know a replay here and there? I know it's available to everybody, but it's really important. Yeah, you have to watch replays. Replays are everything if you want to take this game seriously. I watch replays all the time. And even if you're not betting, watch races because you can learn a lot from just watching races. All right, our guaranteed pick four tonight starts out in race eight. We're going to hit you with a uh, pick four ticket in just a minute here. But that's the race that you have your, your, your potential price play of the night. So tell us about that. Race number eight, number seven, Jewel Lehigh. Last week, this horse was locked in for her life. And when they hit the top of the stretch, she just ran into a wall of horses. And the horse in the front was stopping, but was not stopping enough. And Brett Miller tried to dip her down to the inside, and she was never comfortable during the race. The outside flow, actually a horse came from Lash from the far outside to win the race. And the horse that was second came from the outside. So I thought she was at a disadvantage from the flow of the race as well. And the race fell apart, and you could see she was up on that pace. She was sitting in fourth. Would it concern you that Brett Miller didn't opt to re-drive her tonight? He was listed. I don't really look at drivers, and I know Billy Dobson can do a good job. He does. He, he's brought in a couple prices already, as All we've right. seen. What about my morning line there at 8-1? to one? you think we're going to get that? or Yeah, 8-1. to one. I think you well, might get 5-1. to one. I think okay. they're going to bet the three neon sky because that horse looked like she needed the race last time out. Okay, so there may be an exact box in that race because I think Neon Sky's got a great shot yeah. too. Your pick four ticket, this is the most important thing we're going to give out tonight. Are you a fan of pick fours, you know, especially with that one big pool that oh, we have yeah. here? I like the $50,000 guaranteed pick four because you know that the pool is going to be nice and juicy. And even with the 15% takeout, I think the 15% takeout is key because very serious horse players look at takeout. Okay, well, let's go through your ticket. We already know you like Jewel Lehigh in that first leg race eight, but you're going to use a couple others as savers as well. Yeah, I'm going to use the three neon sky, like I just said. That horse looked like she needed her last start. She looked like she was going to make a move at the top of the stretch, but she just flattened out. But that was her first race back since August. And then I'm going to use the 10 when sharks fly on the drop down. I think she's been facing much better horses, and she ripped off two in a row at Harris, Philadelphia, two and three starts back. Single coming up there in race nine? Yeah, I was going to make him my best bet, but I thought he'd be six to five, and I wanted somebody that was going to be a bit of a price. Number one, Montabano B. This horse was pace compromised last time out as the first and second place finishers went one-two around the racetrack. They just switched positions at the top of the lane, and this horse was the only horse to make up any ground in that race. Now the horse moves to the inside, so I think Jimmy Marone is going to put this horse in play just like he put her, him in play 
three and four starts back because this horse has a decent closing kick. All right, that 10th race, I thought that was pretty wide open, and you agree you needed some coverage there. Yeah, I'm going to go five, eight, nine, and ten. The horse that interests me the most was the five. She's got the beat, not just because of the price, but last time out, I think the horse that won that race got the jump on her. She was closing fast in that race, and I don't care about it, the move up in class. I think that's okay, and I think actually with the three coming out of the race, moving into post four will help her and the eight, nine, and 10 who are also going to use. Well, you've got some prices in there. And then to close it out there in race 11, uh, you're sticking to the inside. Yeah, I'm going to stick to the inside. Number 240 carats. This horse raced very well last time out and got claimed. Now they bumped this horse up for 7,500, so I thought that was a confidence booster. The three, Sand and Sita, is moving down in class. And these horses from Saratoga have been winning here, as we've been seeing. And Monica Christ actually had a 37 to one shot win last Whoa. week. So I'm not gonna leave her off the ticket. And then the four ideal Danny, this horse was parked last week. So I'm gonna give this one another shot All as right, well. so there's a look at Rich's $18 ticket. It was originally 22, but he got lucky to save a few bucks on a scratch here. What's the ideal budget for you when you're gonna play the pick four yourself? Are you, are you a small ticket guy or a big ticket guy? It doesn't matter to me. I, it's more about the sequence to me. If I think I can hit it, I'll invest $50, $60, but if I don't have to, I won't. All right, there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. They don't call him the natural for nothing. Mr. Rich Mateo has joined us tonight on In the Sulky, one of the best young handicappers in the business. Rich, thanks so much for being part of our show tonight. Stay warm, go enjoy yourself a nice dinner and make some money tonight. Rich Thank Mateo, you. everybody. Coming up next, Bob Hollywood Hayden will take a look at our feature races at the Meadowlands on this Friday night.